Hey guys, Drew Grit Scott, Bulletproof Sauce. I'm uh, working on a Neotech build and it's a highway big bore cylinder on it. And I've had a few of you guys ask me questions about doing the brakes. I guess a few of you have seen the video where I press the cases together in, you know, two minutes with the drill press. And I told some folks that, that the brake is probably the second hardest thing for people to do after pressing the cases. Maybe it's the first hardest thing to do, depending on, you know, what you know, don't know. But uh, I figured I'd take some time because a break, doing the break on, a, say, a 660 or 440 or pretty much any of the steel builds, or any of the bigger pro model steel builds in any case, they're all the same, and it, it takes about two minutes to do with just a couple little tricks. So I'm going to show you a couple of those little tricks. Maybe it'll help you out. Um, I got the Neotech brake band kit here, and I do like that this is a sealed bag. Neotech, master of parts, which, uh, I'll tell you what, the, you know, this is probably a good thing. The brake parts are a little bit different in the Neotech kits than the Farmer Tech kits. I can't say that they're better. I can't say that they're worse. I do like this brake handle is... It feels unusually good for some reason. I gotta compare it to a Farmer Tech one just to see if there is a difference, but it, but it's kind of a nice brake handle, so we'll see. Uh, the parts are a little bit different, and when I zoom you guys in, I'll show you some of the little minor differences. Don't know how much they matter, and I talked about some of the differences, I believe I did, in any case, in my Neotech versus Farmer Tech 660 build from a few months back where, you know, some of the little connection points are a little bit different too. Different metal inserted, different shape, minorly different. Don't know if it adds up to a hill of beans. Anyhow, I'm going to pause you guys and I'm going to bring you in close and show you how I do a break real quick. I'm sure it'll go bad today because I'm trying to video it and you know I don't edit these, so we'll see how it goes. Let me pause you. Okay, guys, I got this tripod balanced on a stool right next to me so it's a little sketchy and if I bump you as I bump you I'll try to pause you real quick anyhow I'm going to open up this packet of the Neotech stuff here I guess if I do it on video and we'll see what we have I just saw that scoot all the way under this saw I believe all right what I find missing sometimes in a lot of the kits is these little e-clips I bought at least 50 of them to have them on hand. Um, with the Farmer Tech kits, you usually have to put this little uh, rubber protection shroud or band or whatever you want to call it onto the spring. Um, the big thing that jumps out as me is different is this part right here, which is definitely different metal than the Farmer Tech ones. And I can't say if it's better or worse, but it is a little bit different. Um, spring seems the same. That's, I could tell it's a little bit different. It feels a little bit different, but I can't tell you in function. I just don't have enough. I, I don't have years on these saws yet to tell you on the Neotech. If it's better, or worse, gives me more or less problems. Anyhow, the way I usually start out with this, and I'm going to try to make sure that you could see. Maybe if I prop this up somehow a little bit better than it is, I don't know is I start off with this guy here in the spring. I think this video is going to be a little bit longer simply because I'm fighting to get around this camera as I'm doing it. So I apologize for that. And what I'll tell you is my hands aren't the friggin' best in the world. So sometimes it takes me a minute to do things with little parts. You know, you get old, you start getting arthritis and well, it's a friggin' wrap after that, guys. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> I had you there. Uh, if I could get that around that, I'd be super happy. I don't know if I'm going to, though. <laughs> You're going to fight me today. Let's try that first. Let me pull that out. Well, you see what's taking me the longest is my lack of dexterity in my hands is taking me longer than doing some of this work but this is pretty easy right here oh go back in there little guy all right well what I do notice about this is that let me grab a file right here doesn't 
have as deep of a cut, so it's not grabbing that spring quite as much as what I think the Farmer Tech ones do. We'll see how that stays on there. I think once it's together, it shouldn't be a problem, but in building it as you're moving around, it could be a problem. Well, E clip on there. Now, one of the tricks to these saws, and I probably, well, it doesn't really matter, is I put this handle on, and I usually put the uh, part in it. The This part has to face that way. That part has to face down. I pop it in, try to make sure that it's going through the hole here if we're focused. And then I know I'm good because your brake band's going to attach to there. Your spring's going to attach to there. That's got to be facing towards the muffler. Pop this over. There we go. And then I find the screw for that brake handle, you know, the long one. And I'll pop that right in to hold that. I'm guessing we're not on here totally right, but we'll look at the other side in a sec. Oh, come on. And I don't even tighten that down. I leave it with a little bit of wiggle room in it just to make life a little bit easy. We in focus. All right. Good. From there. Hmm. Yeah, this is acting a little bit different today, but okay. I'm going to have to pop this off of here. Usually I like that balancing on that peg right there so it gives me a little time to play around and that's just showing that there is some differences between this and the farmer tech to me just in the way that sat in there like that or what i often do is i'll pull this cattywampus so it blocks the hole a little bit and then if i pop it down on there It doesn't go all the way down. It lets me be able to move it so I can get the, this guy positioned over there. And then I can take my file. You still on video? And I can just move that guy over so it pops down. Gives me a little bit of a better chance here. Usually this will balance right on that arm there. It kind of went funny, of course, because I'm videoing and trying to avoid the camera, so I'm at a funny angle here as I'm doing this. All right. So once that's in there, what I then do is I'll take some needle nose and I'll pull that down so it'll go all the way down. Pop that on there. See, this does seem like it has a little more play in it. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I'll see how this video goes. Maybe I should have positioned the camera behind here, like over here somewhere and had it reversed or something because maybe my hands are in the way too much. Now here's the part that goofs a lot of people up. The brake band, if you attack it from this way, at least on the farmer tech ones, and we'll see if we have a difference here, I could usually slip that in sideways. Spin it, spin it down, and then pop my brake band in. Yeah, that worked just the same on that. There was no big major difference there. And then I have to move the arm. 
And sometimes what I'll have to wind up doing is I might have to tighten or loosen that brake band. I'll just grab it like this with the needle nose and I'll move it around till I get it right where I want it. And she's just more or less in. A lot of times I'll take... Now this screwdriver here I did something on. I heated it up with the torch. I threw it on top of my anvil or vice or, you know, whatever you have. And I bent it so there's a slight, and I don't know if you could see it, arc in it. Because I use that as leverage to pop that spring on. And that's probably what people find to be the hardest thing. Is popping that spring on which is what we're up to so for the spring hooks into there now this is gonna be funny cuz that camera's really in my way here drop it down and of course the saws rolling backwards on me so you're probably not even in video maybe it is and if anything I have to hit it with a screwdriver and pop it on now you have a pretty much finished brake assembly. And then I'll just finish doing the clutch, put the plastics on, throw the chain tensioner in. I guess I could do a video on shimming the chain tensioner. Uh, I'll tell you what, I found a difference in some of these cases. Some of them I put a little bushing. Where's my little point? I'll use a little brass bushing. You've probably seen videos on it right here. But some of the cases, there's a little more metal here and that brass bushing doesn't fit. So the tolerance is actually better on those cases. So depending on the case, for the chain tensioner, you may or may not need a bushing here. And what I've found is I've used just about every chain tensioner sold by China and even the steel ones. If you have a ton of slop in there, You'll even strip out a steel one. And I even see it on OEM 660 cases that they have more slop than they should. But the steel chain tensioner metal is so good that it'll put up with a lot of abuse before it gives up the ghost. Whereas the Chinese ones, although they have gotten better, Farmertech has gotten better. Neotech, I actually had a problem with the chain tensioner on the last build, but I keep a bunch of them on hand. Now, I've actually had a problem with a bunch of highway chain tensioners just not being right. Anyhow, so the thing is, is once you clean up that slop, if that's in there, I've had even the Farmer Tech chain tensioners last a good bit of time for me. So it's just something to know. Anyhow, that was supposed to be a quick video, and I know I was struggling around this camera, but that's a chain tensioner build on a steel pro saw like a 660 a 440 a 46 uh, i believe the 36 is the same too i haven't jacked with one in a minute and that's about it guys uh true grit scott bulletproof sauce thanks for watching